morning church. Let us begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We have gathered together today to honor our mother of perpetual help and seek her intercession on our behalf. The perpetual help. As a true mother, you sacrificed your own needs, wants, and dreams for our benefit by submitting yourself to God's will and giving birth to our Savior. As your son hung upon the cross, he gifted you to us as our mother, and you have acted on our behalf ever since. You inspire us to be wise, be self-sacrificing rather than self-serving, to give ourselves in loving service to our sisters and brothers. Mary, you were chosen to be the mother of the Son of God. To protect him, you left home and family and became an immigrant in a foreign land. Mother of perpetual help, protect all those parents who make the same hard choice today. Give us the compassion to reach out to those mothers and fathers who have given up home, family, and heritage for the sake of their children. May our nation be receptive to the dispossessed, the poor and suffering children of the world. Keep us always mindful that we are all children of God and our Redeemer died to save all people. Mary, as you rejoiced over the gift of your own son, you wept for all those who lost sons in the slaughter of the innocents. You cry, cried out for all those defenseless children whose lives were taken by those motivated out of fear and self-concern. Mother of perpetual help, protect all innocent life, especially the defenseless. Instill in your children sanctity for all life. Assure those who have been blessed the gift of life in their womb that they are not alone and that their child is a gift from God. Inspire us to care for all children, born and unborn, especially those who need a mother's love and protection. May we, your children, seek to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, heal the sick, and comfort the afflicted. Mary, from the moment the angel Gabriel first appeared to you until you were assumed into heaven, you pondered everything in your heart and reflected upon its meaning. That's your name. Word in our hearts. May we spend our lives meditating upon its meaning and strive each day to proclaim the gospel in word and deed. Mary, when your friends at Cana were in need, when they had run out of wine and joy, you stepped in and fled to the one you knew had a blessing, the one who could restore their joy. and told the stewards to simply do whatever Jesus told them. May we live lives of faith and always turn to your son and be confident that he can heal our ills, move our mountains, fix our problems, and restore our joy. <coughs> Mary, as Jesus embraced his public ministry and went forth to proclaim the good news, you became his first disciple and spent your life in his service. Mother of perpetual health, we turn to you as a model of our discipleship. Inspire us to humbly follow the Good Shepherd. May we spend our lives in loving and serving our God as disciples. May we always seek to do the will of God and mold our lives in the likeness of your Son and our Lord Jesus. Mary, as you wept at the foot of the cross, and a sword of sorrow pierced your heart. You had to witness your son suffer the cruel and merciless death penalty of the cross. I rest compassionate to all who suffer. Help us to leave judgment in the hands of your son and instead reach out with hands of mercy to those who are trapped in darkness until we all walk in the light of your son. May our Mother Mary be your constant help. May she be a true example to you of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ by surrendering your life to the will of God and the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful Father, protection in our weakness, that we who keep the memorial of our mother of perpetual help may with her help and the help of her intercession rise up from our iniquities. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading is taken from Daniel, chapter 3, verses 25, 34 through 43. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Hazara stood up in the fire and prayed aloud, For your name's sake, O Lord, do not deliver us up forever, or make void your covenant. Do not take away your mercy from us. For the sake of Abraham, your beloved, Isaac, your servant, and Israel, your holy one, to whom you promised to multiply their offspring like the stars of heaven and the sand on the shore of the sea. For we are reduced, O Lord, beyond any other nation, brought low everywhere in the world this day because of our sins. We have in our day no prince, prophet, or leader, no burnt offering, sacrifice, oblation, or incense, no place to offer first fruits to find favor with you. But with contrite hearts and humble spirit, let us be received, as though it were burnt offerings of rams and bullocks and thousands of fat. So let our sacrifice be in your presence today as we follow your unreservedly, as we follow you unreservedly. For those who trust in you cannot be put to shame. And now we follow you with our whole heart. We fear you and we pray to you. Do not let us be put to shame, but we deal with us in your kindness and Great mercy, deliver us by your wonders, and bring glory to your name, O Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Our Gospel this morning is taken from chapter 18, beginning at verse 21. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. <coughs> that is why, <coughs> that is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought to him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At this, the servant fell down and did him homage and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had him put in prison until he paid the back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant and had just as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he paid back the whole debt. So will my father do to you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. This is a tremendous lesson on forgiveness. You know, because this gets in your face and personal. Because we live in a world that says, and we love quoting this when we're angry, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But when you step back and slow down a bit, it's no fun getting even if you're the victim of somebody else's sin. We want interest on our pain. And that's where some of the problems come in. Because we look at the Lord and says, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I, I know I did wrong, but you know, please give me a break. And so we do. I've always told folks when I'm preaching, especially in missions and crusades, the most dangerous prayer to say is the Our Father. I know everybody looks at me like I have two heads when I say that. But it's true. Because remember, God hears all prayers and will answer our prayers. Lord, forgive me my debts as I forgive. <laughs> Full stop. Um, what ex how does that translate into our everyday lives? Lord, use the rules I use to judge somebody else. Well, I always tell people, when you have a chance, sit down some evening drinking a glass of wine or a beer or a cup of tea, write down your rules of judgment. Then lay it down, finish your glass of wine, and then go back to it and ask yourself, can I pass judgment using the same rules? A hundred times out of a hundred, we'll look at, Lord, excuse me, by the way, uh, don't use my rules, please, because <laughs> I don't stand a chance. I'd rather use your rules. And here we see what compassion and mercy means in God's terms. 
That's why our mother perpetual hug keeps telling go to my son. See, you got to love Peter. I love Peter. Peter's one of my heroes in the Bible. You know, he's like that troublesome little boy. Praise God. Has no common sense. Whatever is in his heart comes out of his mouth with no stops in between. The brain doesn't usually get a chance to mitigate this. Well, Peter was up front. How many times do I have to forgive my brother? Seven whole times? No. Seventy-seven times. As long as your brother or your sister comes to you and says I'm sorry from their heart, praise God, you need to forgive them. Well, there's a problem there. See, I need to be angry if I won't get revenge. Praise God, I got to be angry to do that. And if I forgive you, then praise God, I'm not going to be angry no more. And I won't be able to get revenge. So Lord, I'll forgive, but let me get my revenge first, and then I'll forgive. Except it doesn't really work. You know, because if you and I want to be healed, especially when we're the victim of somebody's sin, you got to let go. Because God can't heal if there's anger and malice in our hearts. And Mary helped us to understand that. Who knows better than she did? She was at the trial. One of the best organized conspiracies ever created. The scribes and Pharisees and temple priests, Jesus has to die. But we have to make sure we get the Romans to do it for us. So we need to set up the Romans. The trial is not a problem. We'll pay off the judge. We'll pay off the jury. We'll pay off the defense lawyer. And don't have to worry about evidence. There will be plenty of evidence by the time we get to trial. And there'll be plenty of witnesses. We'll pay them off too. So you're almost bring it to trial. And it's going to be a capital offense, I'll tell you that right now. I don't know what the capital offense is, but there'll, it, there'll be a capital offense. And you'll have a wonderful trial, and you're going to be found guilty. And we're going to forego any appeal, and the sentence will be pronounced at the end of the trial. And of course, if you're guilty of a capital offense, praise God, get a death sentence. But being that I can't do capital punishment, I'm going to get the Romans to do it for us. Now how am I going to do that? Well, because remember, for the Romans, the emperor was a god. So, we're going to get the Romans to convict Jesus of making himself a king and a god. Which puts... Jesus in direct conflict with the Romans. And so the Romans have to crucify Christ and praise God, problem solved. Mary was there. She was there when they whipped Jesus. She was there at the cross. So she knows. And she calls us to understand her son's message of mercy and compassion. Now, I always tell folks this, two, the sacrament of reconciliation has two parts. Forgiveness and being reconciled. That's why Jesus constantly says throughout the New Testament, if you have an issue against your brother or your sister, leave your gift at the altar and first go be reconciled. Okay, that doesn't sound too complicated. But what happens, Lord? Hey, Mother Mary, I hope you listen. What happens if I go to be reconciled with my brother or my sister? And they say, I don't care. I'm not sorry. I tried to be reconciled. Well, no, you've got to forget. What he told you, you got to forget. If I can't be reconciled now, I will pray and hope one day we can. But I will forgive you. 
and I will leave justice in the hands of God. And that's, that's something your enemy or your opponent should think long and serious about. I forgive you. And I'm, I'm going to step aside here because you may be above accountability here. But in the court of justice in the kingdom, the fancy lawyer you can get isn't going to make a difference. The only evidence is the truth. And God, remember what Jesus said, vengeance is not, doesn't belong to you. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Isaiah. And so we hear Mother Mary when she says, yeah, compassion, it's really hard. It's simple, but it's really hard. And letting go is even harder. But with her intercession and God's grace, yeah, we can lay it down. Doesn't mean anybody's getting away with anything. I'll leave you to God's justice. pray and ask the Holy Spirit for the strength to accept that. You, you know, we want to take a seat and says, okay, let's get to the justice part, Lord. Well, that none of your business. Justice is mine. I'll decide how justice is going to happen. You can go about your business. Hardest gift in the world to give is with both hands. Sometimes we're good human beings. We give with one hand and we hold on to it with the other just in case. You know, but Mother Mary teaches us, let go. I watched all the enemies of my son unjustly executed. And I stood there and allowed it to happen. Mary tells us, Plan, the plan of salvation is not easy. The plan of salvation is extremely difficult. Proclaiming the good news is important. Embracing this and finishing this journey of Lent, it's about salvation. Not yours, not mine, everybody else's. What about me? What about you? Remember what we committed ourselves to. If you would be my disciple, pick up your cross and follow me. Where are we going, Lord? Are we going up on the hill? Why? Well, there's two groups up there. One is for me, and then one's for you. Okay? Why? You get like a little kid. Why? Well, they're going to nail you to the cross. Why? What did I do? Nothing. Okay, wait, tell me. If I didn't do anything, then why are they nailing me to the cross? What do I get out of this? Pain, suffering, more pain and more suffering. That's it? Yeah. This whole thing isn't, isn't for you. It's for others that need salvation. Your gift of innocence helps someone else find the Lord Jesus and embrace him from the heart. And that's what forgiveness is. And then in time, so does reconciliation. Because reconciliation is a light that can't be put out. Let us pray. We come before you, Lord, and we present our petitions. We pray for the church. May she always be a voice of justice in our world, defending those who stand in harm's way. We pray. We pray for our leaders, for Pope Francis, our Archbishop Mitchell, and all the leaders of the church and state. May they be true servants of God's people. We pray. 
We pray for peace. May the hostility that exists between your children cease, Lord. May you dispel our fears and prejudices and open our eyes to your presence dwelling within each of us, we pray. We pray for all children. May your mother and our mother Mary be a constant help and protection for the children of the world, born and unborn. May we be worthy examples for our children to follow in living the gospel of love and peace, we pray. We pray for the oppressed. Send us, Lord, as you sent your son Alphonsus, as your ambassadors to serve and defend the poor and most abandoned, we pray. We pray for the sick. Place your healing hand upon all who seek healing in body, mind, and spirit. We pray. We pray for the dead. Prepare a place in your kingdom for our beloved and comfort those who mourn their passing. We pray. We pray for a young friend that her co-teaching assignment will improve. We pray. Let us pause for a moment and present our own personal petitions for the intercession of our mother of perpetual help. Heavenly Father, we give thanks and we give glory to your name, for you always hear us. You bless us with all that is good. For this we continue to pray through Christ our Lord. Hail Mary. Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through your goodness we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray that this sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. <clears throat> glory to His name, the good and the good of all His Holy Church. As we honor our Mother of Perpetual Help, we pray, Lord, that the offering of this sacrifice may be by Your grace make of us an eternal offering to You. We pray through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of our Mother of Perpetual Help, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. And for truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you look on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adore your majesty, rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices now join with theirs as in one chorus of praise we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, son. 
the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving you thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving you thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Mitchell our Archbishop, and all the clergy and people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, Joseph, Saint Joseph, with all the apostles, martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in unity with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God Father. So as a family in faith, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from all sin and all distress, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer to one another some sign of God's peace.
Behold him who has taken away the sins of the world, and blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not worthy. You should enter under my roof. When I say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, Lord, that we who commemorate our Mother of Perpetual Help may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation. We pray through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and proclaim the good news of the Lord.